G'day folks and welcome back to the channel for episode number 15 of our ATV Skater Templar, uh, where it has been quite a while. Um, let me see here, 4th of August was the last episode, it is right now the 1st of September, so it's been almost a month. So anyone who's been watching along later, um, you'll have to forgive me for uh, figuring a few things out as I go. Um, I did say at the last, or at the end of the last episode, that I would be farming uh, the gargoyles for some belts. I have a couple of choices here, uh, neither of which is particularly amazing, but um, I think we will be going with this one. Um, so that can probably be sold. I also have a new hat ready to go, and I have a new book ready to go as well. And then a lot of this other stuff is just kind of here. Um, I'm not sure why I have that. I'm going to get rid of the uh, Explorer set and the Leovinus ring because uh, I don't do that anymore. <laughs> that is a massive pain in the backside for a little bit of extra XP. Um, it is a trick you can do if you wish to do it, um, but I'm, I'm not going to be doing that. Um, and I think I had a couple of these uh, pieces of jewelry because... Uh, well, to be honest, I'm not sure why I've got that one. Probably just to comment on the of the Grove rare uh, suffix there, which is quite good. Cronley's ring is almost certainly being kept for resistances, but uh, yeah, I don't need that. And the seal of the royal crown, if you can get the whole set, is great. I'm not going to even pretend like I'm going to get the whole set, though. And uh, these shoulders I probably will wear because they have more resistances than the ones I'm wearing. Um and a ton more armor, so I will hang on to those and put those on shortly. Seal of the Blazing Inferno has a good proc on it. Um, however, the resistance is a kind of meh, so I'm going to throw that one out as well. And then the Combat Medics Mark, I believe, was the old one we were using, so we'll probably get rid of that as well. Um, I did just notice that this new metal doesn't have an augment on it. So, did I actually mean to put that on, or have I swapped it out for um, reasons unknown? So, it's uh, lost a lot of bleeding resistance by swapping it. Lost a healing proc by swapping it as well, for a little bit of extra damage. Um, one thing I have noticed playing this build is it is quite defensive, um, so I am actually okay with losing that. So, let's get rid of all this. Um, and then let's go over a couple of other changes. So, as you can see by the change in the UI, this is being played on the test branch of the patch 1.2. Um, went live uh, three, four days ago, something like that. And there's been a few changes. Um, we'll go through the easy ones first. Uh, Oathkeeper changes have been relatively minor. Generally speaking, things that give you uh, health regen have been buffed. Things that give you energy regen have been nerfed. Um, things that gave you attack damage converted to health have been nerfed as well. On the Arcanist side, the Wrath of Agravix here has had a chunk of main hand damage added um, and also increased damage, so we'll be doing more damage with that. Um, having said that, most of the damage we get from uh, Kalidor's Tempest is coming from the burn, so it is not a huge thing. Um, we did lose some energy regeneration on Iskandra's Elemental Exchange, and we gained some defensive ability on Arcane Will. Uh, in the Oathkeeper side of things, I don't think there were many massive changes. Um, I think one of these has uh, health regeneration on it. Yeah, so Haven here would have got some buffs uh, to the healing effects and such, but um, I think most of the changes to Oathkeeper were increasing energy cost scaling. Same with Arcanist, the mirror now costs more energy. The, the short of it is that, um, as you can see, my second bar has no buttons on it anymore. I don't have a button for Divine Mandate, I don't have a button for my Burning Weapon Auras, I don't have a button for Maven Sphere. All these auras are just on all the time now. And they don't have an energy cost per second associated with them. So with the uh, removal of that energy cost per second, 
they've also reduced your ability to regenerate energy, um, so it should kind of work out to be about the same. The other changes to devotions follow a similar theme. Um, the behemoth has got more uh, regeneration on it now, so this particular node now is plus 50 and plus 70, that's plus 70, or 50 plus 20 is plus 70 over the whole thing. Um, and so that's an increase, you get more passive regen from this. The proc now also gives you more health regeneration and it lasts a bit longer. Things like that, they give you more regeneration because they took a lot of the effectiveness of uh, lifesteal. Um, because they felt that a lot of builds were leaning way too heavily on attack damage converted to health. And uh, they wanted to change that. Um, as far as procs themselves go though, uh, the devotions we have at the moment are largely unchanged. There will be some changes to the Dryad, which we will take later, and also to the Tree of Life, again, which we will take later. Uh, this just got more regeneration on it, and same with the Dryad. The Dryad's Blessing here, just you, you get healed for more now. Um, so yeah, that's all the changes. Uh, with that said, let's go ahead and add some more points into Divine Mandate here. And then I believe we were up to the Coven. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. Uh, I believe we are still Physique dumping. Yeah, let's just uh, dump into Physique and head back to the Coven. Um, actually, having said that, our resistances are no good at all. So I need a Silk Swatch on my pants. Um... And some vitality from somewhere would be ideal. I don't think that's going to happen though. Uh, LE resistances are good. Aether is good. Chaos is good. So actually our metal um, doesn't really need like an Aether Soul or anything right now. So I think I'll leave that until we do this change. Uh, but I do definitely want to um, get a Silk Swatch for those pants. And we'll, we'll strip that Ancient Armor Plate off while we're here. And we'll go make us a silk swatch and that'll fix our uh, PS and bleeding res. So when you're making silk swatches, if you put sill in here, that'll also give you the resilient plating, which you can then swap straight over to silk swatch without having to go searching for it again. Right, back to the coven and uh, we already have the Caraxes Foul Heart. So we will go and give that to Garadia here. And we have a deal. We will go and talk to the cannibals. Now, as I said, it's been almost a month since I played this character. Uh, so it will take a little while for me to get used to it again. Um, you can also come down here and get a couple of lore notes for some easy XP. Uh, where is the second one? Here it is that hidden spoils there. I actually didn't know it was there, so this is the first time I've seen this one. And we have a double rare. Mage Storm of Scorched Runes. That is actually very, very good. Um, so, a, a lot of people get really super excited about double or triple rare items, and a lot of the times it's going to be um, you know, you found an MI that buffs Force Wave, for example, and um, and the prefix buffs Cold Damage, and then the suffix is a pet suffix. And yes, it's a triple rare, it's a very rare drop, but it's also garbage. This one, however, Mage Storm is all the elemental stuff there, and Scorch Ruins is also all the elemental stuff there. So this is a very nice pair of gloves for an elemental build, which we happen to be. It also comes with double the armor of what we're wearing. Uh, so, we're just going to put that on. And uh, all of our resistance problems just went away because these old gloves didn't have any resistances and the new ones have a few resistances on them. Um, so that was both an incredibly lucky drop because it's a double rare but also an incredibly rare drop. Also, listen to this. And notice the big green beam there. 
as well. So this is part of the UI changes of 1.2. This little symbol here lets you know it's a double rare. The big green beam is kind of like, hey, look over here, this is important. And the bong is to uh, one, so I can make silly noises. And two, to let you know that something important has dropped. Uh, you'll also notice that the two green symbol shows up on the map and you can mouse over it to see what it is. So if something drops and it's over, I don't know, let's say it's up here, so it's it's still close enough that you can see it, um, you can mouse over it and go, okay, yeah, it's a double rare, but it's garbage. I'm not going to walk over there and find it again. Um, right, so that was, that was incredibly lucky and also incredibly strange, but I'll take it. So, our mission is not to kill Korvac the Eldritch Sun. Our mission is to find Barrowholm and also to rescue the Traveling Witches. The other thing I want to do while we're here, and uh, anyone who's been watching the Spellbreaker playthrough as well knows I just did this for the Spellbreaker, um, is we're going to go into the, um, the Ancient Grove and we're going to pick up uh, the prismatic diamond for our helmet enchant. Now, our helmet currently has a runestone by the looks. Yep. So, runestone. We don't need elemental resistance. Losing 12% would take us to 25 over cap. Not a big deal. 12% aether res. I would like to keep, um, but again, it's not a big deal. So, we can happily... Um, we can happily lose that, and getting the Prismatic Diamond would give us some damage absorb, which is always a good thing to have. Even in small amounts, um, it can save your life, so we're going to go get that. Now, I will be hopefully demonstrating it correctly this time. Um, I did play through on the Spellbreaker, and uh, I, I kind of whiffed it a bit, but uh, I'll show you properly this time. Um, so we agree to... Mogdragon's quest, he gives us a skeleton key. Um, there is only one more of these available as a quest reward for each difficulty. So you can get one from Mogdragon from his quest here, and one from, uh, is it Calderas? Out the front of the um, Steps of Torment, which we've already done because we wanted access to Zarthuzalan to get his codex here. Um, so this is our last skeleton key. Uh, if you use the key and you don't get the um, the prismatic diamond recipe, you are going to have to craft another one. And they are not particularly expensive, but they do require some kind of rare crafting materials. So just be aware that the early in the game, um, they would be what I would consider to be expensive. There is also a shrine in here, which obviously we like. Um, currently, on the beta for 1.2, these plants are probably the most dangerous thing I've found, because they all spit their little uh, poison meteor things up into the air, and they come down and, I don't know if you saw that red circle, but that is a sunder. Um, the next patch will remove Sunder from non-bosses, so only bosses will Sunder you. But for right now, uh, Sunder is incredibly dangerous because it's basically you take 10, 15, 20, whatever the percentage is, extra damage from just everything. Um, and you can't just stack resistances to reduce it. Uh, you are going to have a very bad time. So hopefully I'm not going to die while Sundered from monsters who aren't supposed to have Sunder. Uh, but it is a possibility, so it's something I need to be careful of. Which means I'm going to be targeting those plants with extreme prejudice. Now, uh, coming into the Ancient Grove, we want to get past the Skeleton Key door uh, and onto the first level. And then we want to clear the left side of the first level and also across the top towards the second door so as we can run back and forth and reset until we get the Prismatic Diamond recipe. Um, I do have enough iron bits in order to get that. Let me let me just show you here. Um, 
so this guy, oh he just died. Never mind then, I'll find another plant. Here we go, one of these. So this will come down, and you'll get this. Uh, it seems like the first one didn't hit me, didn't sunder me. Um, if you see that big glowing red circle above your head, it means you're taking extra damage from everything. And uh, you probably should be panicking at this point. <laughs> it's very dangerous. Okay, you getting back up? No. Alright, so Ellie Storm has just... See, that tail whip as well is also applying Sunder. So yeah, I'm a little bit scared of anything that does that. Because it's just, it's extra damage that you just take and there's nothing you can do about it. Um, our armor is kind of okay. It's not amazing, but it's alright. Um, I do think I should maybe be putting more points into Maven Sphere. That might be something I do next. Alright, so we are into the actual... Um, the actual Skeleton Key dungeon now. Uh, this is the dangerous part, as it were. But we should be okay. I'm not going to say this is the tankiest build I've ever made, but um, it's decent. Alright. So, level up. I think I am going to dump at least a couple more points into Maven Sphere. Um, I just want the extra protection, to be honest. So, 1, 2, 3 gets me 4%. I'll take it. Uh, the guide I have been following, the ATV guide, uh, definitely does put more points into Maven Sphere. In fact, it maxes it out over the next few levels. Um, but being a guide written and designed for playing on normal difficulty, it um, it focuses more on the offensive side and less on defenses because you're not supposed to be dying on normal. Um, normal difficulty is not particularly hard or dangerous. Right, so here's our friend Vinalton here. Where are the crabs? There they are. There's always a set of crabs under the ground here. Um, hopefully he just has the Prismatic Diamond. I'm standing in goop, aren't I? Yep. Okay, so, Prism. Now, it seems to me that this might just be a guaranteed kind of thing, because the last three or four times I've been here to get this, he's just had it the first time. I haven't actually had to reset. Um, and the other thing I want to check is, are any of these any good to us? None of them appear to be fire damage. Aegis of men here, I don't care. No, none of that's any good. How about belts? Soldier skills, soldier skills, inquisitor soldier. Nope, we don't want any of that. Okay. So this is what I was here for. And um, I could show you, I'm actually not going to. Um, I could show you how to reset this vendor, but I'm just going to talk you through it because it will save a little bit of time and we'll be able to get some more progress in. So if you go up this left side, there may or may not be a totem at the top there, but you go up until you hit the top and you go across until you get to the next, uh, the door to the next floor. You go through that door and then you just stand there and you count one, two, three, up to about ten. Um, I'm not sure exactly what the number is. I've I've had it work with just going to three or four seconds before, um, and I've had it fail while standing there for eight or nine seconds. So it's some amount of time you just stand there, and then you come back. Okay, um, you have to go to another area, uh, normally out in the world. So if you were going to Benavold's shop in the Blood Grove, you would just rift to let's say Devil's Crossing, and then you would count you know, 10 or however much you're going to do, and then you would rift back. Um, and then he would have a whole new set of items. All these would be re-rolled, all these, all of this, everything. It's like you load in a complete new shop. Um, speaking of, let's just have a quick look if there's anything here that I want. 
Um, probably not going to be anything particularly amazing. No. Okay. So there's nothing else I want from him. Um, and I'm not going to reset it because we already have the prismatic diamond. Uh, not that I think I'm going to be able to craft it uh, straight away because you need 12... Um, 12 uh, seals of Cthon. Um, so I'm probably going to have to do a little bit of farming before the next episode. But this is how you get it. And if he doesn't have the prismatic diamond when you come here, you will have to clear up the left, clear across the top, go down, count to 10, come back, run all the way back, and check him again. And eventually he will have it. And it's it's possible that he just has it always the first time, or if he has it available, he will sell it to you. Something like that, uh, because it's been a long time since I actually had to farm, or had to go and reset him to get this item, and I can't actually remember if I ever had to do it. So, the easy way to get out of the Ancient Grove, because I'm going nowhere near Gargaball with this character, is you exit to main menu. Uh, you can't portal in there, so you just exit to main menu. And that's your uh, your free portal to town. Good thing about the 1.2 patch is I don't have to cast all these buffs anymore, they're just on. Uh, which I'm a big fan of. Um, I don't think we need the Restless Remains on that either. So this helmet at 55, um, the stats on it, again, not particularly amazing, but more armor is the main reason I'm looking at it. Um, and the resistances are okay. So we'll put that helmet on at 55, and I'll put a diamond on that. Okay, I have been playing way too much Path of Exile. <laughs> Alright, that's a little more like it. So, uh, let's summon our two little friends. And we're going to head back out into the bog, and this time we are not going to go and talk to uh, Mogdrogon. And this quest is going to stay with us until Elite. Which is going to frustrate me, because I hate having quests there, but um, yeah, it is what it is. Also, uh, there is a quest in here that requires an item from these... Uh, yellow named basilisks. They didn't drop it this time, but I do want to kill basilisks until I have that. I also want to kill leaf main alphas for the same reason, for the same quest, and kill the plants because they are evil, dangerous, dangerous plants now. Alright, um, so over here, I think we're a little north actually, but uh, we're going to we we'll head for this door here for Janaxia's den. We're going to kill Janaxia. Again, it's a quest that we don't have just yet. You can go out and do all the quests one at a time if you want. It is much more efficient to um, just do them all in one go and then come back and turn them in in one massive pile. So that's what I prefer to do. Uh, you do what you like. This is just my preference. Right. I am also breaking one of my main rules here, so I don't have components on two pieces of gear. Um, that is a bit of a no-no, but it's not going to be the end of the world, and it's not going to be permanent. And the only reason I'm doing it is because I don't actually need resistances in those slots, and they don't really provide me any good damage or survivability options. Um, but. Just in case anyone feels like calling me out, yes, you are correct, I should have components in every single slot. Right, so for Janaxia here, we're going to run in, we're going to blast her with that, and then we just do short little hops to try and keep her in the Elemental Storm. Now you can see this symbol, this is just a regular MI. For people who don't use the rainbow filter, this is how you will tell it's an MI. Um, the silver around the edge shows that it is only a single rare. Um, if it was gold, uh, then it would be a double rare MI. I don't have one of those to show you, unfortunately. Um, so, it is what it is. Righto, moving on.
Um, just looking actually at our devotions, we have another point available, so we can finish the Solemn Watcher here. And I think we get the Dryad next. So this will give us a, a healing proc on attack, which is going to be very useful. Now, the problem, problem in air quotes, is what do we actually attach that to? Because it's triggering on attack, we have to put it on an attack skill. And we already have Aether Fire on Vyas Might, and we already have Elemental Storm on Kalidor's Tempest. So, we need to find another attack skill. I think it's going to be Judgment, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, but, don't quote me on that. Um, and also, we will need to get some more levels to get that. And I will need to actually double check and make sure that uh, the Dryad is actually going to be the next skill we take. Because I could be missing something. Whoops. Clicked on the other screen for a second there. Alright. This guy's uh, He's a big boy. He's a dead big boy. Okay, so here's our Leaf Main Alpha Horn. That is the quest item I was talking about before when I said we need to kill Basilisks. We no longer need to kill the Leaf Mains. Um, we do need to run away from those plants though. Um, not because I'm particularly scared of them, although I am, but because I was going the wrong way. We head up the right hand side here and um, leave a trail of fire behind us. Okay, Arcane Blaze, but that was a two-hander? One-hander. It's a weapon, it's not what we're after. Alright, we kill the plants and keep running. He's got a yellow name, so we want to kill him. And let's just blow both of those up. Alright, more Basilisks, which is definitely something I want to see until I have that quest item. There it is. So Venom Gaze Bile. Uh, we will need these two, plus I think it's an Ancient Heart. And that'll be one more quest complete. Um, if I'm remembering correctly, and there's no guarantee that I am, but if I am remembering correctly, we should be relatively close to the Witches to rescue. Um, actually, no, we're not. We're not even halfway there yet. <laughs> This bog can really turn you around. Alright. So here is the Ugdenbog Rift, which means we are close to... Uh, what's that witch's den? Can't remember her name. You should see it show on the map just here in a second. There it is. Uh, Laria. Laria's den. Um, I don't really need to kill these anymore, and the plants are scaring me, so... Uh, words I never thought I'd actually say. Alright, we don't need to go in here just yet. We don't have the quest to deal with her from uh, Barrowhome, but we do need to come down over this way and just make sure this door either is here or is not here. Uh, today it is here. Along with a lot of these plants. Should be an achievement for that black thumb kill 10 plants within 20 seconds or something like that. Anyhow, so we're in the undergrowth and we are here for the big tree boss at the end. I pushed Q and it didn't heal me. That's a little worrying. Alright, why can't I? There we go. This place is uh, more than a little bit terrifying. Just look at all the damage I'm taking. Okay, Vine Ring of the Cabal. Not really too fussed about that. This, this is really worrying though. Okay, what do we get? So, Hellion Greaves, that sounds like it might be fire. It is. Is that something we're going to use? We'll have a look. 
Um, let's pick up all the blueprints first, and we'll eat those. Um, Mark of the False Gods, not really part of the three though. Praetorian Face God uh, is not the set I thought it was. So never mind about that. Okay, so these are the Hellion boots. Armor value, not amazing. We would lose health to put these on. Gain Fizz Res, which would be nice. The Flame Burst proc would also be good. Um, Consecration is going to be one of these, is it? No, nope, I guessed wrong. It's in here somewhere. It's probably... I'm not sure which one Consecration is. Here we go. Okay, we're not using that, so we don't care about that. Um, the Fizz Resist is nice. The Move Speed is nice. The Offensive Ability is nice. Spirit, I don't really care. Um, I would say these boots are more of a side grade. Um, I'm not particularly fussed about swapping them in. I think I'd rather have the health. Um, these gloves are a little more interesting, though. Um, the fire damage, the 3 to 9 only applies when we hit things, which doesn't apply to us very often. 42% is not a massive deal at this point, but 6% physical resistance is quite nice. Um, I'm not going to wear them, but definitely is something that could consider if you find them. Alright, let's go around the, the arms that get in the way. Alright, we do also have a blue chest up here, or a um, an exalted stash, so guaranteed blue item. Uh, it's garbage. <laughs> but hey, guaranteed blue item. Alright, we also have these big boys to take care of. This is diseased shale leather leg guards. I don't know what they are. I'm going to have a, have a look at them. They are not something I'm going to use. However, 9% chance to avoid melee damage is quite good. Double armor is also quite good. How is my poison res? I'm only just at the cap. Okay. I would actually like to use those pants. Um, since I am playing on hardcore, survivability is something I care about. And 9% chance to just avoid being hit. Um, specifically in melee, but just any any time. Is uh, is something you want to consider wearing whenever you get the, the, uh, the drop. Uh, Mage Storm is, again, you see Lightning Aether and Elemental Damage. Meditation is, I think the Energy Regen is Meditation. Um, however, I don't think that is worth wearing. I do generally try to solve my resistances with my jewelry. Um, and on this build, uh, this ring specifically, is really not very good. It does have that Scorching Ends proc, which... Um, those procs are quite nice, but it doesn't have any resistances, and as I said, I do try to fix my resistances with my jewelry. So, we may have to swap that one out. Alright, of squalls is lightning damage, which is not something I particularly care for. Now we walk our way out of here. Uh, actually, what we could do is just go straight back to the Ugdenbog Rift. This is probably uh, probably not going to save very much time. However, if we head left here, uh, it may save us a bit of time. Since we don't actually have to run back to the start of the, uh, the dungeon that we were just in. There's nothing actually there for us. Um, let's actually go left after spending all that time talking about it. Uh, we do have to rescue the witches, and they do indeed live over here. So, there's another Alpha Horn. If you wanted to, you could go back to town, put this Alpha Horn in your stash, come back and get this one. Um, I generally don't have any issues finding those horns before I need them, so this is not one that I bother doing that with. Um, however, there are a lot of quests that you can do that with. Okay. This build is 
Maybe I'm just used to having the uh, the shadow dance now, but I feel like this build is very very squishy compared to the Spellbreaker. Maybe it's a level thing actually. This is 25 levels lower than the Spellbreaker is, so a little less optimized for damage. Okay. Uh, Ancient Ruins is for Ugdal. Let's go talk to Ugdal. Um, actually, there's literally no point. I don't have a Wendigo Spirit to give him, so we're just going to skip him for now. Alright, Obliterous has been obliterated. Uh, Rune Carved, again, is the uh, the elemental burn, frost burn, all that sort of stuff. So these could be good as well. Um, I think these are actually better than the other ones. The reason I think that is because um, the damage percentages there are quite small and we already have heaps of that. So they're nice to have, but not amazing. Um, I think these... Let's have a look. Which one gives us more health? Yeah. So the 4% health is worth more to us than 183 flat health. And for me, uh, I value 35 defensive and 49 offensive more than 15 offensive. Um, I would value defensive ability higher than offensive ability. We actually can be crit by bosses at the moment, so I don't like that. Um, now we can't be crit by Obliterous, so... That's pretty good. Um, the other thing as well is the rune carved gauntlets are actually more burning and elemental damage than these double rare ones are. So maybe we got bad rolls on the percentages for the double rare, but um, yeah, it seems like the rune carved ones are better. The issue, of course, is that we now have uh, not enough vitality resistances, so there may be a glove. Um, component we can use to max out our vitality resistance. Um, that is something that I now need to fix. Though having said that, we are about to get a whole bunch of new items online in the next sort of, I don't know, two or three levels. And that's actually going to lose vitality resistance. That one doesn't have any vitality resistance change. This is adding Pierce, and this one has no resistances, so we do actually need to fix that Vitality Resist problem. Alright, we have made it through to Barrowholm. And now that we're here, we're going to get a bunch of quests picked up, and we will go ahead and start those. However, that is going to be a thing for the next episode. I'm going to end this one right here, so thank you all very much for watching. See you in the next one, and goodbye for 